All right, we are back. And last time we made the factory inject the score into the presenter. Yes, exactly. What about instead of injecting it into the presenter, the presenter just uses this function directly? Right. The problem there is that we have a tight coupling with the presentation layer and the scoring layer. Which might not be a problem. We could have this dependency directly here. Yeah, I think it depends from app to app. And this is a very simple client so far. As long as we have good abstractions and good interfaces, we can shift the dependencies on higher level layers when we need, as we have done throughout all this series, basically. The important part is not to be afraid to change things. Exactly. We are welcoming changes in all steps. Absolutely. Absolutely. The right decision for you right now might not be the right decision for your new requirements in the future, right? So you need to be able to change all the time. Exactly. So let's move on. Let's start. I think the first thing we can do is to deprecate the initializer. Well, remove it as soon as no one references it anymore. Yeah. So let's have a look at who initialized the iOS view controller factory. In one place, it's the factory tests. Yeah. This one references the old initializer, the deprecated one. Right. So who is referencing this method? Oh, apparently it's only one place. It's the make question view controller. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So it's just a case of invoking the right function, but we need to keep the same setup we had before. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So the setup we need to set the questions. Mm -hmm. Incorrect answers is an array of tuples. Question answer. Yeah. Second parameter is the answers. Yeah, it's an array of the answers. Let's just give it an empty array. I think that should do it. Let's see. And it's passing. Great. But what if I have the wrong setup? Right, OK. What if I just pass an empty array here? Would I have a failing test? Hopefully. <laughs> if I don't, I'm not confident with this. Yeah. Yes, we have. Failing tests. Fantastic. Let me make this pass again. Great. Now I can remove the function that is deprecated. It's passing. Let's commit. Okay, so removed the deprecated make SUT function. That's it. We are using the new APIs now in the test. Can we remove this initializer now? Well, no, because the app delegate invokes that. Okay, we just need to use the new API here. Right. The parameters now to create a factory are options and correct answers. Right. And correct answers is an array of tuples. Question answer. Yeah. Okay, so we don't need questions anymore. We still need the options. But the correct answers now is an array of tuples. And right now it's a dictionary. Why don't we just create one in line for now? Yeah. That's fine. The answer to the question one is option three. The answer to the question two is option four and six, just as it is here. Yeah, looks good. Beautiful. Commit. Dated the app delegate to use new factory API. Right. Now we can delete this method. Excellent, step by step. Okay, it passes. All right, and just to mention again what the process is, you know, we don't want to modify the old code because that would result in breaking components. Instead, we want to add the new API, add the new behavior, and gradually start migrating the rest of the system to this new API. Yeah, so as Kent Beck says, you first make the change easy and then make the easy change or something like that. Right, right. <laughs> to do so, we introduce the new API and we keep the old one until no one references it anymore. And then we get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And making the test pass along the way, making the compiler happy along the way. And of course, we have a checklist. And the test. <laughs> and the test. We have a test to guide us. Yes, it helped us many times. So let's commit this. Removed a deprecated initializer. Yeah. Are we done with this class? Do we need the questions there? 
we do because there are some APIs using it. Let's see. No. Right, okay. But it could maybe be a computer var, rather. Yeah. Okay, so if we make a private var questions and we keep the same type. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is a closure still. Right. <laughs> we have an item for that. The lazy closure, yeah. Let's just see if the test passes. What is wrong? Oh, the name is questions. I call it question. Okay. Yeah, it's passing. So maybe we can also make this just data again. Correct answers should be just an array. Yeah. So we don't need to invoke this here or here. Here as well. Fantastic. Beautiful. So I think another improvement we can do here in the factory is to make this uh, class final. Great. Commit. And the next cleanup would be to remove this deprecated results for controller for result. Mm -hmm. Clean up the private implementation after deprecating the old APIs. Okay, let's have a look at the list. Yeah, I think we can remove some items now. This initializer is gone. The correct answers is now just data instead of a closure. Mm -hmm. Almost there. This one is the next. Yeah. So let's tackle that. Why can't we remove this right now? Because this method is actually a requirement from the view controller factory protocol. So what we want is gradually, again, to start migrating any other components that reference this code, and then we can get rid of it altogether. And the new code is this. Yes. This is the new API we want. Exactly. So let me open the view controller factory. We want to add this API. We want to replace it, yes. We want to end up with a results view controller for user answers instead of for result. Right. And what answers is? Uh, it's the type alias. It's basically an array of tuples. Okay, so we have a plan for the next episode. Deal with this factory. Excellent. See you next time. Bye, y'all.